recording right now. Alright, so what's up YouTube? We're about to discuss uh, first podcast on Batman vs. Superman. Um, I think, I guess we should probably break this down to sections, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, what do you think would be the best section to talk about first? Maybe Jesse as Lex? Uh, that's that's the freshest thing, so I think we could start there. All right. Well, uh, let's start there. How about how about you go first? And yeah, let's go in. Um. In fact, I'm going to let's make this more interesting. I'm gonna time you. Okay. <laughs> I, what's 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 a good time? Um. This could take a minute. Maybe uh, two minutes for each. Let's try that. Okay. All right. All right, so your thoughts on uh, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex. Go. Um, it's an interesting choice. Um, he's, in my personal opinion, any film I've seen him in, he's a very uh, one-dimensional type of actor. Um, it seems like he plays the same type of role in everything that he's in um also lex in my opinion has always been kind of a physical presence to superman um and eisenberg i don't think is going to be able to present that physical presence um in a way that say michael rosenbaum did on smallville um so i, I mean obviously he can always work out i mean they Got Gal Gadot to to play Wonder Woman, so um, there's obviously the feeding him chicken and working out. Obviously, it works <laughs> for The Rock, so right, could, right. Um, but but picturing, I, I just see him being maybe like a more of a techie New Age type Lex Luthor, uh, um, which I, I just don't see. Maybe they'll put him in the suit. Um, but I don't see him being the physical presence that he needs to be to Superman, personally. All right. You're at a minute and 17 seconds. Okay. Anything, uh, anything else? It, I don't know. I it just I, I saw the picture of him, Jonah Hill, and... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, Michael Sarah. That shit yeah. was mad funny. Um, yeah. Uh, what was it, Jonah Hill <laughs> as the Penguin, I think? Yeah, and then... Uh, Michael Sarah as uh, the the Joker. Yeah, you saw uh, the you saw the other one, Josh's page too, right? Where it was just uh, Eisenberg, just straight bald and looks legit. Yeah, just oh my gosh, I don't know. Couldn't, I don't know. Can't, can't see it. I, even bald, I, I still can't see it. Like I said, I think the biggest thing for me is that physical presence. All right, all right. You just came up at two minutes. I think that was a. Uh... Some fair arguments in there, but my turn. All right, so my two minutes is starting. It has started. Begun. So, two minutes. Shit. Uh, let's see here. I actually, <clears throat> I think it's a great idea, as a matter of fact, that Eisenberg was chosen at first. I was like, I don't know about all this, but when thinking about it, first off, you've seen The Social Network, right? Correct. All right. Well, in that, I thought he was phenomenal, and from judging that alone, and then also a lot of fans aren't taking into account longevity. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people are like, oh well, Brian Craxton would be great, or uh, God, what's that one bald dude from Kick Ass? Uh, Mark Strong. Him oh as yeah. Well. But people aren't thinking of longevity. You know, uh, signing up for Lex, you could be signing up for three years, you'd be signed up for five years. So, in that sense, I think Eisenberg would be great because of his age. And he obviously has acting chops. He's been theater, SNL, many movies, a lot of shit ones. But, I mean, if you've been under the helm of David Fincher, who does, like, I think uh, for one scene alone, he might do, like, 99 takes, you know? <coughs> he, he, uh, he's been carved out, and he's He's a bona fide actor, so I think he can pull off the depths of Lex. Now, the physicality thing, that's really bothering people. But it doesn't bother me because, I mean, it's not like he's going to be fighting Superman 
you know, fist to fist anytime soon, you know what I mean, unless he's in a mech suit. And even then, does he really need to be six foot and 200 pounds? I'd rather someone who nails the essence of the character as opposed to, you know, I don't know, matching the character, you know, note for note, I guess, you know. Kind of like, um, you know, making a, a character black, like uh, Electro in Amazing Spider-Man 2, like how they made Electro black, even though he's usually white. Uh, shit, I broke into two minutes and eight seconds. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know. What do you think, uh, as far as, you think we can agree on anything with uh, Eisenberg? Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to discredit him because I thought Heath Ledger was going to choke as the Joker, but obviously yeah. he yeah. basically told me to shut the F up and let him do what he <laughs> needs to do. So yeah, yeah, one of the greatest villains on, on cinema I've ever seen. Um, yeah. So I'm going to hold my judgments um, <coughs> and, until I see the actual film. But it, it's just, like I said, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, him fighting but to me, like that's what I was kind of worried about who they were going to get as Batman because I was trying to picture somebody who could physically stand there as imposing as Henry Cavill is in that suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's where I feel like if if Cavill and Eisenberg come face to face, like <laughs> yeah, quiet, yeah, that's that's true, that's true. But I mean, it's about the brains, right? Though the intellect, you know. <laughs> That's true. I, like I said, I, I'll hold judgment until I see the film. So. I just, I think he's gonna be able to bring the moody uh, darkness pretty damn well. But I guess we'll have to see. I think this should lead right into uh, Ben Affleck being cast as uh, as Batman. So you want to go first or me? Uh, you go ahead. All right. Batman, my, my favorite character. So. All right. All right. Really, your favorite superhero? Yes. Oh shit. He's not even really a superhero. But... <clears throat> Alright, um, let's, I'm just gonna limit myself to a minute, how about that, starting now, <clears throat> Ben Affleck as Batman at first, I was literally horrified, like literally the first thing that ran through my mind was, uh, what was it, uh, G. Lee and, uh, <clears throat> fucking Daredevil, right uh, <laughs> What else? What else went through my mind? Uh, just I just thought about, like, I thought about ten years ago. Ten years ago of nightmares. But after getting past all that and thinking about the modern day, I was like, wait a second. Gone, baby, gone. Uh, whatever the fuck came out of that. I guess The Town. And then Argo. All films that he self-directed and starred in, except for Gone, Baby, Baby Gone. I think just his brother was in there, Casey. And ever since then, he's been golden. He's been fantastic. Even in that horrible movie, Runner Runner, he was fantastic in it. And yeah. uh, one thing to note, I know I'm getting close to mid, Mark, but fucking this October, when uh, David Fincher makes Gone Girl, um, that's really gonna... Like I said, David Fincher knows how to mold an actor. I'm telling you, people are doubting Ben Affleck's acting ability. Just wait till Gone Girl, because like I said, David Fincher does like fucking like 99 takes for one scene. So <laughs> by the time Batman vs Superman comes along, he's gonna be carved out and ready. But uh, my minute is up. So get the camera. I'll, on I don't here. know if I'll keep Batman talk under a minute, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go for a minute. All right, and your minute starts right now. Um, we were sitting here before we went to Kansas City for my bachelor party, me and Josh and my brother Joe, right. and it came across my phone that Ben Affleck was cast as Batman. Uh, those two flipped out. <coughs> I, my, my, I was kind of um, awestruck right. because I was like, oh, man, that's, that's an interesting choice. Um but then immediately, within probably five minutes, there there was fan made art of Ben Affleck's jawline in, in mm -hmm. the cowl. <clears throat> yeah, for uh, sure, dude, he can pull this off. And and I immediately thought of Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns cartoon series part one and two. Yep. I was like, damn, Ben Affleck can definitely pull <clears throat> that. Off. I was like, he's a mid or uh, yeah, mid forties kind of guy, and he's got that gristle to do it. I think he's going to 
knock it out of the park the way Ledger did the Joker. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> You're at uh, 57 seconds, but... And the minute mark. Really? Yeah. Let's try and find some, uh, <clears throat> some common ground to agree. You think that... <clears throat> Wow, that's big words right there. <laughs> I know, I, I I agree. I mean, first off, he's a bona fide Batman fan from the get go. I think when he went to Daredevil, he said he said that he wanted to do Daredevil, Daredevil because he knew that he would never do Batman, which is just weird. He's six something, um, so he's definitely the the first person to play Batman that's like the right height, you yeah. know. Uh, I think he's gonna crush it for sure. Um, oh man, the Batman suit. We should talk about that. Yes. I'll, I'll let you go first. Absolutely. Starting now. Um, as far as the suit goes, obviously it's all speculation. His wife has seen it. His best friend, Matt Damon, <laughs> has seen it. Um, personally, I want to see something that's never been done before, at least on film, in a movie. Yeah. Um, I would love to see kind of like the uh, the gray with the blue. Yes. Um, or I would like to see an Arkham style, but not as not as padded as what the video game makes a suit. Um, I think one of those two, or if they could make a mixture of those two, um, something like that would be absolutely phenomenal to see on screen. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. How's Stop you early. Uh, let me throw my thoughts about this. Alright, the clock is running for me. I think a blue and gray route is the best way to go, honestly. Uh, do you think that there should be yellow in it? Because I've been thinking about this real hard, and I don't think Zach would put yellow in a blue and gray design. I, I just I don't see it. I'd be very surprised if he did. I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I don't know if it would look right, even. You know? I don't. I don't think so. A utility belt, maybe, but I, I don't think that he'll he'll go that route with the yellow. Because usually Zach, he tries to go for that almost almost Michael Bayish sort of badass look, you know. So I doubt he would go for that. But blue and gray would be the best. And for me, I I don't know if you can pull off short ears in cinema. I think he should go for way longer ears i think a concept like that would be really menacing and cool because short ears i'm just i'm not i'm not seeing it in a movie and that's that's a minute for me <laughs> yeah i agree that's uh the ear thing is, is kind of something that you know you don't want to go with the the short little stubby yeah i just kind of fat have is the short stubby ears but i think for for that character it's got to be it's got to be the longer yeah. ear, for sure. Um, man, wouldn't that be fucking mind-blowing if he went for the short ears? I wouldn't know what to... i probably need a whole day just to process that. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, I can't wait to see... Holy what... shit, that's actually one thing I never thought about, the ears. If they were actually short, that would be totally... If he went for that, I would not expect that, actually. I, I wouldn't either. Uh... That, would, that would catch me off guard a little bit. Huh. I don't I'd be know. able to do it because I I can all I can do is picture Ben's face in that cowl. Oh, <laughs> all right, so let's discuss. Uh, let's do a simultaneous one. Uh, you know we're doing really good on this damn podcast. We're only at thirteen minutes, damn. but uh, let's let's do a combination. Let's talk about uh, each separately. Let's talk about Gal Gadot and Jeremy Irons being cast. Okay. So. Um, uh, I guess I can go first. That's fine. First off, here, let me press start. So I'm going to go. All right. Jeremy Irons, I don't think there's anything to talk about. <laughs> I think he's a perfect fucking Alfred. Like I said in a video uh, a couple days ago, I think, if you don't think Jeremy Irons is a great choice, you clearly haven't looked at his discography. So... That's 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 about it as far as that goes. But Gal Gadot, that's a question mark. But it's not in her. For me, for me, I think she's a great choice. Like when I look at her, who's really sexy by the way. When I look at her, she, I can just see it. You know, there's so many times when someone gets cast, I'm like, I can't see it at all. When when she got cast, I can see it. 
Um, I, I don't care about the whole weight thing. I mean, that's... I mean, obviously, she's going to gain more mass. How much mass? That is the question. The breast thing, that doesn't really bother me either because she already looks great. Uh, Men and Mark just ended. But I just want to say... What was one more thing I wanted to add? Um... I mean, she's used to fighting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, the training will be there. There was a, there was a good point I was going to make. can't remember. Um, oh, yeah. There's nothing in her discography that's like, oh, God, she's going to be a, a Kristen Stewart or some shit, you know? Yeah. Like, she hasn't really done enough work to be like, like, oh, she's a horrible actress. The movie's failed. The franchise has failed. Like, she hasn't really been, what, the Fast and the Furious movies? I don't really count those as... As yeah. acting chops, you know, because uh, that's really all that she's known for. Because most people, if Fast and Furious hadn't existed, when she got cast, most people would have been like, huh? You know, like, who the hell is that? You know? Yeah. So, my main concern is her role in the movie. That's what I'm scared of. Like, why the fuck is she in the movie in the first place? Like, if it were up to me, she wouldn't be there. It should just be an emphasis on Batman and Superman. Adding Lex in there, that's fine because. He's just a part of Superman's universe anyways. But right. Wonder Woman, she could literally be the icing on the cake for this movie like uh, Two-Face was for Dark Knight. Or she's going to ruin this movie. And, and not from her physicality, not from her acting, just from the character, literally, being there. How are you going to balance all that? So I'm thinking either... For me, I hope she just makes an appearance and that's it. But... Let's go with your thoughts and uh, Clark's or the clock starts now. Um, I think Jeremy Irons is is great. Um, Alfred has always been that crutch for Batman, and I think Irons is a great person to portray that um, for Affleck. Um, Gal Gadot, I personally wanted Gina Carano. Uh, to be cast as Wonder Woman. Um, Wait a think... second. Are you talking about the chick who's also in the Fast and Furious movies? Uh, she was in one of them, yes. She was also... Um, she was a UFC fighter. Oh, okay. And... All right, I got you. Um, I th- her relationship with Henry Cavill fizzled out, and, th- and that ruined that possibility, but she physically just had that demeanor. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not so much about the being busty and, and and having the curves that you know they portray in the comic books for Wonder Woman right it's, which would be it, nice <laughs> uh, yeah. it's more so um, like you said how is she gonna fit into this universe um, and I, I worry um, that they're, they're just trying to cram too much into the film mm-hmm. um, I would I would rather have seen I don't know, maybe uh, a Green Arrow reference, a Flash reference before Wonder Woman. Um, just because she's Amazonian and, you know, that doesn't that doesn't seem like it fits into this world. But Flash is from another city. He, he it, That's more realistic to me to fit into this type of film than some Amazonian woman that has this lasso, this truth lasso. Well, I mean, I, I, I stopped the clock uh couple seconds a few seconds ago but i think i think if they had to include a third party member i actually think wonder woman actually was ironically the best route to go but still like i just actually here's something interesting i was doing some research and there is a old ass comic book series where wonder woman she was like a she worked at a like an airport or some shit and she um she kind of, like, was an assistant for Bruce Wayne or for Clark. Some shit like that. If, if they go that kind of route, that, that could work, maybe? <laughs> sort of? That Something like that could work. That could be interesting. I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I understand what, um, what Warner Brothers is doing, especially, like, with, um, you know, the, the Arrow show. I don't know if you've seen it, but right. people love the shit out of that show. Um, and, uh, I just feel like with the fan base that's growing there, they had a better potential to bring in Oliver Queen right. into the movie. I mean, cause it seems like to me, it's just a, a complete setup for a JLA film. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, uh, it's got me afraid, but I'm hoping that it's just an appearance. And uh, I don't know. That's that. Yeah, that's that's one of my big problems with the movie. Really, just how the hell is she gonna fit into the story? Well, and for her to be like, the, they announced that third. Yeah. Was, we already knew who Superman was. Yeah. They announced Batman, which was a huge freaking ordeal. Mm. Uh, and then Wonder Woman was next in line. Yeah. So, it, I just don't see her being like a a ten minute piece of the film. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too. Fuck, it's gotta be scared. <laughs> but um, what's what's another what's another topic to discuss about this movie? I'm trying to think. Um, I'm not sure this current second, but I can say that if they if they get this movie right. If they do it correctly, if it's like a great, a great movie, like both critically and uh, user, uh, if there are great reactions to this movie, I think it might be, it will be the greatest grossing film of all time, easily. Like it'll, it'll easily trump Avatar. Avatar two, that's tough. If Avatar two comes out in twenty sixteen, because. James Cameron is a perfectionist, so the movie might come out in 2036 or some shit. But um, even still, I think Batman vs. Superman will for sure be the top grossing of all time. Because the marketing you could do with that movie, if it's great, is insane, man. Insane. That, that's, a, uh, that, that's a big weight to hold on, the, on that movie. <laughs> it, well, is it though? I mean, look at... Uh, the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, uh, they both each separately grossed a billion dollars. Uh, Man of Steel made like 600 something million dollars. But that's only probably because people were kind of unsure if it was going to be awesome or not because Superman Returns was horrible. But now that everybody's like, oh, wait, shit, Man of Steel was, was really damn good. Now Batman, Batman's going to be in the next one? What? Wonder Woman? I think. Man, mixing all those ingredients together is it's caused to explode. Yeah. I, it it has potential. I just don't see it as much as I want it to because seeing that Batman and Superman on film, yeah, in, in live action, face to face with each other, yeah, that I, I might have to get up out of the movie theater <laughs> and leave after that scene. <laughs> Um, it's just going to be such an epic sight to see both of them on the screen at the same time. Yeah, you know, I was telling Josh, um, his brother Josh, by the way, I was telling him the other day that, man, another thing to point out is that Zack Snyder has never made a, uh, like a horrible movie, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I really hated Sucker Punch, you know? But it wasn't like, it wasn't terrible, you know? It wasn't like Smurfs 2 or some shit, you know? He hasn't made, like, a horrible movie. I mean, with the exception of Sucker Punch, everything has been really solid from Zack Snyder. From Watchmen, 2004, Son of the Dead, 300. Um, you know, these are all really solid movies. Mm-hmm. So, it, there's no way it could be horrible. I know that much. <laughs> and if Man of Steel, if Man of Steel was any indication, man, holy shit! You know what I mean? It gives me goosebumps thinking about it. You know? Yeah. I wonder who's back behind all this, pushing for these characters. Um, like, like if it's Warner Brothers or if it's if or if it's somebody. Zach and the screenwriters. Yeah, I I think no. it, I, um I think it might be a simultaneous thing, you know, because you can't exactly just do things behind the curtains behind the company's eye. So I think it's kind of like a like hey guys, we came up with this, what do you think about this sort of I think it's a simultaneous sort of relationship they got on creatively. Um God, I just hope Wonder Woman doesn't screw up the movie. But then again, you could technically say that about Lex, so that's true. And plus, Zack Snyder did make maybe one of the most complicated movies you could ever make, Watchmen. So, yeah. Uh, if he can make Watchmen, I think he can make squeezing one woman Lex in pretty, 
pretty all right. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, yeah. They, they had tons of characters in Roger, <laughs> and he, he got them all involved in, in, in there. And in, in according, that's that's probably one of my favorite, like, book to film adaptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is probably one of my favorite and probably one of the most accurate as well. Yeah. Um, here's a good question. This is a question I have not heard anyone ask. What do you think about um, the composer? Hans Zimmer, he's one of my favorite, he is my favorite composer, for sure. Uh, because when I looked at his discography like a few months ago, I almost shit myself. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, never mind, he's my favorite. Do you think Hans would actually <laughs> fucking try to do the soundtrack to Batman vs. Superman? That, that <laughs> That's a good question, because he did Nolan's trilogy. Right. Um, and Man and of then, Steel. Yeah, and he did Man of Steel, so... You know, I don't know because he uh, he said that it was it took a while for him to figure out the tonal difference between Dark Knight and Man of Steel. Right. Um, so for him to have to write another <laughs> track for another Batman. <laughs> yeah, writing things for Lex, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Assuming yeah. assuming she's in the movie a lot, anyways. Uh, that'd be a hell of a feat. If there's anybody that can do it, though, it's it's Zimmer. For sure. For sure. I mean, damn, he's already done, like, 100 movies. He might as well squeeze in uh, Batman vs. Superman. I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm kind of hoping he will, but I just know it's going to be so difficult for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Holy shit. But, uh... Is there anything remaining that I wanted to talk about with this movie? Um, actually, there is one thing. I actually saved it to my phone, like the geek I am. Where in the hell is it? If they can find a way to squeeze in this quote, I want you to remember, Clark, in all the years to come, and all your most private moments, I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. If they can find a way to squeeze in, like, just... Just a piece or half or a little bit or something from that quote in the movie. That would be, I might faint in my seat. <laughs> now, see, and this is this is where um, I, I feel like Arrow would have been a better option because it was because of him that Batman was able to get his hand around his throat. Huh? You were, are you talking about the? Helped him with the suit, the bat suit that he could fight Superman in. Because remember, in the Dark Knight Returns, uh, the reason he was able to fight Superman, <clears throat> it's been a while since I read the graphic novel, but he fought him in that big armored suit. Uh, I can't remember what was special about it, but yeah. I wonder if I, uh, I've seen so many DC <laughs> animated films lately. You know what? I think I'm, uh, I'm mixing up. Dark Knight Returns and Flashpoint Paradox. Oh, okay. Which brings to mind, by the way, YouTubers, that I think it'd be either they're going to have to introduce Kryptonite somehow. I don't know how the hell you do that. but Or um, find a way for Batman to get a hold of some of the, maybe some leftover General Zod's pieces of armor and just fucking max amplify those bitches or something like that. Something along the likes of that. So he can fight Superman. Something like that would be pretty pretty cool, actually. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Any final thoughts about Batman vs. Superman? Um, yeah, I hate that they pushed it back a year. Oh, but, fuck, yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, Ten months. Yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a pain in the ass. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that it... it it's going to have probably the most epic cinematic moment when we see those two clash on screen. Dude, I, I was telling my mom the other day, I'm telling you, when the first official trailer comes online, it, it's probably going to be the most, like the newest, most watched video on the internet, period. Oh, yeah. I mean, holy shit. I love Avengers. Uh, well, I don't love it. I really like it, but... I love what Marvel's doing with their universe, but I'm telling you, man, at Comic Con, when they had, when Zach dropped the bomb about Batman vs Superman, everything that Marvel had done at Comic Con just got like drowned out. 
<laughs> period. Yep. And I don't see how it's going to be any different when it comes out at the box office in 2016. Whatever Marvel's done, it's the completion of its Phase 2, maybe showing previews to its Phase 3, Avengers 2. Like, I don't think any of that's going to matter. <laughs> they do a great job. Marvel's about to be shut down for a while because, man, they're going to take a back seat. <laughs> Holy shit. Especially if this film is, is as successful as we're hoping. I mean, they'll they'll probably jumpstart a, a Justice League film ASAP. Yeah, ASAP. I'm, I'm still sticking to the theory that they could be, because keep in mind, no one knows why the hell they pushed back the movie 10 months. Uh, I think it could be because they're trying to shoot uh, JLA and this movie simultaneously, which would be a, a genius idea because it just saves money. And people's ages. <laughs> so, true. I, uh, what do you think about that? Them possibly shooting, you know, at the I, same time? I, 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 it makes sense. I mean, nobody is going to shoot a trilogy back to back like James Cameron, but, uh, yeah, or Peter Jackson. Fine. Yeah, um, but I, I think it makes sense, um, especially since you, um, since Warner Brothers has, casted uh ben affleck as an older batman right. um obviously he's he's got maybe three films in him anything more than that i just don't see um the reason for casting him so uh i think shooting them simultaneously or even within the <laughs> same year um makes the most sense for for warner brothers especially if they plan on kicking out this jla film after Batman, Superman. Yeah, because they Warner Brothers stated that hey, we're pushing it back because we need to fully realize our vision, and <clears throat> apparently the script has been done for a while. So I mean, that's the only reason I can really think of because Ben Affleck sure as fuck didn't break his leg like the first rumor, <laughs> which is a ridiculous rumor. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think uh, I think we cover most of it. We're at uh, thirty-two minutes right now. With the first podcast about Batman vs Superman, um, we covered way more topics than I anticipated. But uh, I don't know. There's nothing else that comes to mind that I really wanted to say. But there is something I want to speak on for a minute, though, about Star Wars <laughs> uh, from J.J. Abrams. Um, my first. I've been wanting to say this for a while, but my dream pick for the Star Wars movie that's coming up and for future installments would be if Neil Blomkamp directed an installment. Because I believe what they're going to try and do is kind of like have a different director for each new installment. You know, because after the 2015 Star Wars movie, there's supposed to be a new Star Wars movie like every two years or something like that. And J.J. Yeah. Abrams, don't get me wrong, he's a perfect pick, like, perfect it's gonna be insane but uh i would i would love for neil blomkamp to direct the star wars film i think that would just be incredibly orgasmic <laughs> he's actually been approached with the question and he stated that well at least at the time that no nah, I, I would love to do it but i just i can't do it right now because i'm more interested in putting out original content but I mean, Jesus Christ, by the time the next Star Wars movie will have came out, you know, Neil, Neil would have put out three original films, which would be District 9, uh, Elysium, and then Chappie. His next film was supposed to come out next year. But what do you think about that Blomkamp um, directed a Star Wars movie? See, I, I think just from the two films that, that I've, I've seen from him, I think he would be more fitting, um, and I know he, he wants to stick with his original content. Right. But if, if they ever adapt a Halo film, oh yeah, that yeah. dude would knock that shit out of the park. Yeah, he was actually supposed to make it a long time ago with Peter Jackson. That that but, would be incredible. But for for him doing, he, I just don't see him doing the type of spectacle of a Star Wars film. Really. There, there's a lot of pressure to do that, and I don't but know... But he, he has such a a vision, man, of, like, um, he has such a vision. Even though he only has two films, these are 
uh, two hell of a films <laughs> to have under your belt for a first time go. I mean, holy shit. I hope my first live my first two live action films look that great. I mean, there's they're so the worlds are so intensely realized, you know. Because let me tell you, once you try and create your own movie for months and months on end, it makes you appreciate <laughs> filmmakers' work. Let me tell you, and he's I I just think Star Wars and his vision would be just something just like jaw dropping. Like if you gave that motherfucker one hundred ninety million dollars or two hundred, it was like run off of Star Wars for this installment. I people's heads would explode. I think. Um, I know he's more used to like rated R content, so it might be hard for him to keep it PG-13, but I just, I think it'd be pretty mind-melting, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that would be, uh, I mean, I definitely would not go see it, that's for sure. Right. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know, like I said, I, I think he's just too, he's too, um, real in his movies, um, even though he, he makes movies about aliens and, and traveling to space, he's just, it's like you said, the the worlds that that he envelops in his movies are just so real, right? Um, and I, I just don't like I said, Star Wars is a spectacle, right? I mean, right. it's been running since the, the '70s. It, it's a huge ordeal, yeah. Um, and you know, I maybe if he gets another film or two under his belt, um, then he could handle the spectacle of the Star Wars, mm. maybe. Maybe Star Wars Nine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to to take on seven or eight, I I don't know. I think it's too soon for him. <laughs> Maybe it might be. Um, like I said, I do think that J.J. J. Abrams was. I think he was literally the perfect choice. Seriously, I think he's gonna knock. He's gonna hit a home run, one hundred percent. But and I know that Neil has said that he he wants to stick to original content. But I'm I'm praying that in the future. So when asks him again and convinces him to make one, because I just like you said, he does like to keep his movies grounded, even though they are rich in fantasy. But man, I could tell it would be something unlike anyone was prepared for. Yeah, you know, for sure. I agree. Um, but yeah, so we're at the thirty-seven minute mark. By throwing a, a bonus piece of content talking about Star Wars. <laughs> But, um, I don't know. You think we forgot anything for Batman vs. Superman? Not until, uh, not until they blow our minds again with some other amazing <laughs> cast announcement in the next month or so. <laughs> I guess the only last thing I can think about for Batman vs. Superman is, do you think we'll see anything this year from the film? Anything. And when I say anything, I mean in terms of, uh, poster or teaser trailer do you think we'll see any of those or is the year just going to be empty void of batman vs superman because keep in mind uh i think it was just announced fucking a couple days ago that they're they're gonna start filming um this summer i think that uh, i don't think we're gonna see anything till 2015 honestly really <laughs> nothing no, no posters no teaser trailer nothing I, I don't think so because it, it's just it's too long. Unless they do it, unless they do something in December with with whatever Christmas release Warner Brothers may have set up, yeah. um, I think maybe that would be expectable. Um, but anything before that, it's it's there's too much time. I mean, you've got you know at this point it's over two years before the film's released. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's so, that I mean, a good point. That's a good point. Putting a, a teaser poster out now would would just be, I mean, it would give the nerds blue balls. <laughs> well, yeah, but don't we already have blue balls though? Well, but seeing it come to fruition on a poster, like seeing that Batman Superman emblem on screen at Comic Con, was enough. <laughs> Putting it on a poster, I'm going to destroy movie theaters. <laughs> that poster off the wall. I just, <laughs> I think. Um... I don't know, man. Just uh, having people all afraid. It's not like they have to put anything explicit on the poster, neither. But just having people just so up in arms about the casting and, and then pushing the movie back ten fucking months, which might as well be five years of fans. <laughs> yeah. It, it just, it's going to be, I for me, I, it'd be way harder going 
the whole of 2014 with nothing. Like, it'd be nice to at least have a, a teaser trailer. I don't give a fuck if it's a 15-second teaser trailer that just shows, shows a, a banner and, and Ben Affleck's talking and I can barely hear him. Like, <laughs> I just, it'd be nice to have something, something. But I see, I, I see what a, you mean. I see what you mean, though. It is a long time from now, so. That's why I think a, a poster might be the best route for them to go. If it's yeah. just the clash of the emblems, if it's whatever um, title they finally decide on, because Batman Superman's still a working title. Yeah. What the fuck? There's a final topic. What the hell? You know what? I'm gonna say this. I think Zack Snyder should just say fuck it and be so bold as to just call it Batman versus Superman. Seriously, because if you think about it. It's an ingenious idea because we we just gotten used to calling it that anyway, so why not just call it that? What do you think? If you're going to incorporate characters like Lex and Wonder Woman, I, I don't think it can be Batman versus Superman. It, the whole film would have to be centered around Batman figuring out a way to stop this alien from another planet that has some serious powers that he's never seen before. Well, uh, see, I was thinking about that as well, but the problem for me is they would contradict themselves if they did that. Like, when they first spoke about this, he talked about calling it Batman vs. Superman, and he showed us the logo, which was Batman, Superman. Not Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman's lasso tightened around the logo. You know what I mean? Like, so if he... V has a title that's different just because at the last minute they were like, fuck it, let's just throw Lex and Wonder Woman in there. I think that's kind of contradicting yourself in a really bad way, you know. I think he should stick to what he originally showed us and told us, I think. I, I man, I just, it, it's a Man of Steel sequel. That That's the true, thing that true. a lot of people are, are forgetting is that, this is the second Man of Steel movie. Yeah, but so. just because it's the sequel, why? I don't. For me, like, does it really need to be void of of Batman? You know, I think it makes no. I think it makes sense that Batman was added. I mean, technically, first off, let's just be honest, they had to do it because Marvel's like fucking raping right now with their universe. <laughs> but yeah. I think it kind of kind of makes sense. I don't think it's too big of a stretch. I mean. I mean, what else could they have really had up their sleeves? Doom, Doomsday, you know? That could have only been so exciting. That's true. Um, man, I, I don't know. I just think Batman vs. Superman, I personally don't like that title because... Really? The, the, I have a feeling that in the film, they're not going to be fighting that much, especially because they're at the end, they're probably going to culminate to one... Uh, to an agreed upon reason to work together. Yeah, I think I think there's just going to be a key a key moment of physical conflict, which Zack Snyder has said that there will be physical conflict. I think there's just going to be a key moment of that, you know, like one scene, just like in no different than Dark Knight Returns, just like one key uh, key scene where they fight. I think it's going to be like that for sure. He kind of has to do it, shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you can't make that movie and, and not have him fight. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that his buddy Henry Lennox, I think, uh, said at, um, at Comic-Con before he showed the logo, uh, the first thing that happened was the reading of that quote, you know? Yeah. So they kind of have to fight, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Man, I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> But uh, we are at the 43-minute mark. Guess uh, wrap it up, I guess. That sounds good to me. All right. Well, we've covered just about everything pertaining to Batman vs. Superman, all of our opinions. Also, even threw in some bonus content <laughs> about Star Wars. I want to get off my chest, my love for Neil Blomkamp. But, um, yeah. So this is podcast number one. Podcast number two should be like... Um, I don't know what the hell it's going to be. Maybe we'll be talking about Marvel's Phase 3 and 4 or Dark Knight Rises vs. Avengers. Something something exciting. So, till next time. <laughs> Peace. Peace.